This video is designed to show how to use Expression Web 4 to create a uh, dynamic web template, which is uh, just a template approach. Uh, and uh, if you are watching this, then uh, probably before you go into this, what you need to do is watch. There is a lecture on uh, using templates that I have made available to the class. And the first eight and a half minutes deal with the theory behind why you use templates and how they work. And uh, then the rest of that video goes into doing them in Dreamweaver. This is to replace that uh, section about doing them in Dreamweaver. Uh, so uh, watch that other section first and then uh, go forward with this. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do a, a new and uh, <clears throat> the documentation says that there should be a place to do a new web template here, but it, it's not showing up, so I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm creating a document here, and then I'm going to save it as a template. Um, so I'm going to choose a Save As, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to choose Dynamic Web Template. Okay, and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this Master. You can call it whatever you want, uh, as long as you know what it what it is. And uh, so I'll click Save. And you'll notice that when I did that, it changed some things in there. It uh, created an editable region for the doc title. Uh, that's essentially an invisible um, editable region that allows you to change the titles and, and some other content inside of the head. So. Um, that's the first thing. Then the next thing that we want to do is we want to build the structure that is going to be the basis of our website. So I'm going to insert a handful of divs. And so th there's a number of different ways that I can do this. Um, one of them is that I can choose to insert a uh, div tag. Okay, so when I have that div selected, I can... Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter an ID and I'm going to call this header within the header and you'll notice I'm putting it within the div tags here I'm gonna add another div and I'm just gonna code this one and I'm gonna call this one nav so I'm putting my navigation in there I'm gonna just type the word there navigation I'm gonna put header in here just because that way I can see um, where those things are going on and you notice when I click down in here, you can see that text that I put in there. If I hadn't put that text in there, I wouldn't be able to see where that is. So I've got two divs now. I've got the header div, and the header div contains the navigation, the nav div. Okay, so now I want to pop outside of that header, and I want to do, I'm just going to call it main body. And you can call that whatever you want. Now I could uh, break this up into further divs. I'm not going to go into that because you don't. I don't need to do that to demonstrate the functionality here. And I want to put a footer div in there. Uh, again, you are going to use um, the structure that that you're going to use for your website when you're doing this. Uh, I'm just doing one as a sample. So I'm going to put a footer in there. And you notice that it automatically puts in my closing div tags. So now I have a basic uh, web page. I haven't done any structure to that or anything. But I do have uh, a dream, um, dynamic web template. Uh, but I don't have any editable regions except for this one up here. Uh, if you remember from the video on uh, the templates, uh, you need to have editable regions when you're using templates. Anything that is not in an editable region will be the same on all the pages that are created from that template. Whereas anything that's in the editable region can be changed on the individual pages. So let's just say that for instance I had um, in my header here I had a logo, I had uh, some text. I'm just going to throw together a quick page uh, to have some some real content in here and I'll be right back so I've gone ahead and, and added some sample content in here I've put in a image for a logo um, I might uh, 
put in a header level one in there too. Yeah, that kind of thing. And then I've put some div, uh, navigation content, mock navigation. Right now it doesn't go anything. And then I've got a, some mock main body and a main footer right here. So I've got my basic information. Now what I have to do is decide throughout my site what pages are going to exist, uh, what thing elements of the page are going to be the same on all sites. And generally speaking, your header is going to be the same on all sites. Your footer is going to be the same on all sites. Maybe your navigation is going to be the same on all the pages of your site. And then this other section which is your, your your real content is going to be different in every one. So what I want to do is I'm going to designate this section here as something that's going to be different in every page that I use. So I'm going to add an editable region here and the way that I do that in this product is I go to format. I make sure that the section that I want to have as an editable region is selected and then I go to format and then I go to dynamic web, web templates and then I choose manage editable regions and what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to create a new region name and I'm just going to call that main body editable and I can't call it the same thing as the name of the div which was main body uh, so I'm going to call it main body editable I select add and you'll notice that it adds this little tag here that says main body editable which is my editable region on this. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. You can add um, a series of editable regions if you need to to do that. Again, this is just an example to show how it works. And when you go into the code, when I select that main body, you'll see in here um, begin editable, main body editable, and then there's the end editable. So anything between those tags can be changed within. Um, when we go to the sub pages and I'll show you how um, how that works out so the thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and save this template and it's want me to move my files in there okay so now I've saved that as a template so I want to create a new page from this now remember that when I create a new page from this, this code, whatever code is in that template, the whole code is going to come in here and the only thing I'm going to be able to change is the sections that's in the editable region. So I'm going to close that master document and I'm going to do a file new and I'm going to create from dynamic web template. And so then I have to choose the web template that I'm going to work with Okay, and now you see that um, the, it's got the different sections highlighted. Here you can see in white those things that you can change and these other things you cannot change. You can see the little circle with the line through it, meaning um, no. You can't change these parts that are not in the editable regions unless you're working in the master template itself. So I'm just going to say this is the home page and I'm going to save it. give a new folder I'm just gonna call it templates lecture and I'm gonna call that index.html within that page um, I am gonna change the title and that allows me to change that title because there is that editable region in the head so I'm gonna save that and then I have this page and you'll notice it says this is the home page so um, that's what it looks like I now let's say that I want to link my navigation to that home page I can't do that from here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into that master um, DWT file and I'm going to create a hyperlink to that home page So I've selected the text and I'm going to go to create that link and now you'll notice that there is a hyperlink there. When I go ahead and save this, 
So now when I save this, you'll see that it's going to tell you that there's one file attached to this um, template file. Would you like to update it now? Yes, you want to update data, and you always want to update it because that's what maintains the synchronization between the template and the pages. So we'll click yes, and what we'll see is we'll go to, and I'll close this master template just so that we're we're clear about here. Um, this comes to the other page, the index.html file that we created from this, and you'll notice that now that home has been highlighted as well. And that's because I created that in the template, and what it does is it pushes out any information from that template. Um, it changes the code on any of the pages that are attached to that. But you will notice that it has not changed this, and I'll, I'll reopen the master, and you'll see the difference here. In the master, it's still got that default information. Uh, this is some sample text that I have put together just to demonstrate, etc. It didn't push that forward to this other page because that is the editable region. So what it happens is when you change the template and save it, that pushes out updates everywhere except for in these editable regions. And it doesn't push the information in the editable regions. What that allows us to do is create a bunch of pages from the template, put content in them, and then if we later change that template, it will change the portions that are not in editable regions, but it won't change the editable region. So it won't change that content that is supposed to be different on every page. And that is the foundational reason why we use templates and why they're so efficient, because it's, 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 um, it gives you a workflow that allows you to update a lot of pages at once based upon their association with that page. Uh, but it doesn't change the parts of those pages that you want to have the same. So um, let's go back. There's one more thing that you got to make sure that you do at this point. We're going to be using uh, style sheets, but we want to make sure that we attach those to this uh, template page. Later on, you can also apl uh, apply template um, CSS pages to the individual pages, but you need to have the, uh, the, the main CSS attached to this. So uh, what you would just do at this point is you would choose Attach Style Sheet. Uh, let me go ahead and create a new one just to, and walk you through this. So I'm going to step out of this. I'm just going to do a File, New, uh, CSS Document, and I'm going to call it File, Save As, and I'm going to put it in this. Normally, I would put it in the CSS folder. So I'll just call it Templates Lecture. Dot CSS, and we want to make sure that that is set as a CSS file. That way, it's got the dot CSS at the end. So I click Save, and you'll notice that right now that's blank. Coming back to the master document. Come in here and you will see that um, it has not yet had that style sheet applied. So um, I've created the style sheet. I come into my uh, master document. I choose attach style sheet. Now I browse to that. I only want this on the current page and I want it as a link. And then I'm going to choose that document. And you'll notice that up in the head section, it's going to have the templateslecture.css, and that's the one that I'm going to be working from. So that if I now started creating uh, properties for this, um, what it will do, it, since that is attached to the master, I'll go ahead and save this. It's going to want to update it to all the pages that are there. What that's going to do is, again, here back, back to index.html and bringing to the code, you can see that that has um, added that uh, CSS file to this. So let me work on the master. And what you're going to do is you're going to create the primary look and feel uh, of this site based upon this. What I want to do now is I want to go in and I want to add some CSS styles. So um, 
I select the header in this case and I select it there so that it grabs the whole thing and then I come over to this apply styles section and I ch choose new style what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the new style dialog box that allows me to select uh, in this case um, I want to choose the ID of header which is pound header you can also do any of these other elements uh, that might be included in the page as you add more um, IDs they're going to be added in here as well I want to define it in the existing style sheet and I want it to apply the new style to the document selection so now I've got my choice of things to choose I can choose the font etc I can use um, some of these kind of elements like let's just go ahead and put in a background color so I'm going to uh, choose from the colors I'm gonna use the selector and I'm just gonna pick a color that's in the photo just because that's how I like to do things um, I'm gonna click OK and you'll notice that it puts that in there again I am working on the master file but really I'm working because that's attached to this templates lecture um, that's where it actually made the changes in the CSS style or the CSS document so that changes here but as I go back to my index because the index was attached to the style sheet it automatically applies that so once that style sheet is applied anytime you make changes to that style sheet it's gonna make changes to all the pages that are attached to that style sheet and that is then how you would move forward and um, create a template and use a template to make updates using Expression Web 4.